Welcome to the Chart of Truth Layer 2. For those who missed Part 1, go ahead and click here or check the description for a link to that video. Before we get into it, I wanted to give you guys a quick update on how this series is going to be done from here on out. I'm going to be trying to omit my opinion seeing as from the last video a lot of people felt as though I was sucking the fun from those theories which I can sort of agree with. So from here on out, I'm just going to be laying out the general idea and be as objective as possible. Sorry if I made anybody feel stupid or left out in the first part due to my opinions. I hope you guys enjoy this slight change. Another thing I hope is that you guys check out the wallets from today's sponsor, Volkit. Everyone loves to talk about Ridge Wallet and get sponsors from them, but honestly, having tried it myself, I went on an entire wallet journey going through four different wallets until I found Volkit. This is by far the cleanest, most compact, and most useful wallet I've ever had the chance of owning. In fact, I didn't even get sponsored by Volkit because they reached out to me. I went out of my way to email them myself because I loved their product. Not only do they have an easy to use clip to pull your cards out, which by the way you can do with one hand, which makes paying for things so much easier, but they also have two additional pockets inside which from the looks of it can fit quite a lot in such a small package. And for those who carry cash like me, there is a dedicated cash holder stitched into the back of each of these wallets. This is my personal favorite from them, but they have quite a variety of wallets to choose. If you want this particular wallet, this is the name of it. They also have other minimalist style wallets and all types of different colors and materials, from carbon fiber to stainless steel. Be sure to use code YET2021 to get 15% off of any purchase. Just to be completely transparent, I'm getting paid commission style, so if you don't want to join the Patreon but you really want to support me, go ahead and buy one of these wallets for me and use the code YET2021. So go try it out, and thanks to Volkit for sponsoring this video. Today we are going over layer 2 of the Chart of Truth iceberg. Thanks to everyone who responded to the Google form. If you took the time to fill it out, thank you so much. I also realized after I put out the forms that I forgot to add a question asking for everyone's names. For the part 3 form, I have added a question stating what name you'd like me to put at the end of the Chart of Truth videos to show that you helped in the making of it. So if you guys want to be in my videos, make sure to help me out by filling out the next part in the Google Forms. If you've already filled out some of the other Google Forms, go ahead and join the public Discord, there will be a link below, and feel free to at me or message me telling me of the situation and I'll be sure to include you in the next part. With that said, let's get into Layer 2. So Layer 2 is a little bit deeper than Layer 1 obviously and it's aptly named Baby. Operation Northwoods. Operation Northwoods was an operation proposed by the U.S. Department of Defense. The operation called for the U.S. government staging and possibly committing acts of terrorism against American military and civilians. After doing said acts, they would then blame the Cuban government and use it as a way to justify a war against Cuba. The scary part is that this type of operation got so far in the legislative process that the president actually got this operation proposed to him as if it weren't fucking crazy. Thankfully, JFK rejected the idea as I can only imagine the backlash that it would have had if Americans found out about their government doing this. The operation recommended hijackings, bombings, and phony evidence that would have implicated the Cuban government. The document was published online in early 2001 and that's how we know about it today. Not much else to be said, moving on. Acupuncture. I believe that we all know what acupuncture is, but if not, Acupuncture is a form of traditional Chinese medicine where thin needles are inserted into the patient's body. This is done because people believe that inserting these needles can cure any illness that they have. The way in which it cures any illness that you might have is by hitting your body's so-called chi points in such a way that it has a positive effect on your health. Some people that have had an experience with acupuncture believe they merely experienced a placebo effect, but even so, most people that have gotten acupuncture get it for back pain apparently, which is kind of funny because if I had back pain, I think the last thing I'd want is someone sticking needles in it, but anyways, some people have been said to have actually gotten beneficial help from acupuncture, some believe it's a pseudoscience, but there have been cases where people do get better, whether or not it's a placebo effect doesn't matter because the person did in fact get better. With that said, let's go on to the next item. Max Headroom. I actually covered this item in my disturbing internet content iceberg, so if you haven't seen that, I'll link it here and in the description. 
The Max Headroom incident refers to one time when a TV broadcast on WGN TV was suddenly hijacked by a mysterious man in a Max Headroom mask. He appeared on screen laughing and talking in a distorted voice, all set behind a moving background similar to the background that the actual Max Headroom character was shown in on TV. Which by the way, Max Headroom was a real TV host and a real entity, as for why this man chose to use a mask of him in his hijacking is unknown. There was two hijackings that this Max Headroom person did, one on WGN TV, and then later that same night, he did one in Chicago on WTTW TV. To my knowledge, the whereabouts of this hacker still remain a mystery to this day. I have had people claim that it's been debunked since, but I have yet to find a reliable source that says so. Moving on. UN Agenda There is this theory among conspiracy theorists where people believe that the United Nations has some sort of hidden agenda. The agenda that they have differs from theorist to theorist. Some believe the UN are banding together like this to preserve the knowledge of aliens. Some believe they are together for more power, and a lot of people believe that officials in the UN are somehow linked with Satan or the Illuminati. I'll leave a link below to a cool comic that I found that basically encapsulates this idea a bit better than I have here, but the basic idea is just that big officials out there in the UN are doing some shady shit behind closed doors. Moving on. Space is fake. So this theory is pretty self-explanatory from the title. There is a select few out there that believe that space is in fact fake. Most of these people are flat earthers and use the space is fake argument to further their flat earth theory. This idea stems from the fact that there is no real way for everyday people like you and me to confirm whether or not what we see from space is true. What I mean by this is that we as people that aren't astronauts or at NASA have no real reliable way of looking that deep into space and probably will never get to experience seeing actual space. Therefore, since we have no tangible proof aside from the pictures that NASA gives us, we technically can't be too sure if what we're seeing is actually what's out there. Comment below on your opinion of this theory. Anyways, let's move on. Lucid Dreaming Have you ever been dreaming, going about your bizarre world, doing just normal dream things, and then boom, you realize that you're in a dream? Knowing that you're dreaming, you try flying or doing some cool Kamehameha blast. Come on guys, I know we've all tried that at least once, but anyways, lucid dreaming is just the act in which you are fully aware that you are dreaming and are able to freely do whatever you want. Most people naturally experience this at least once in their life, however, it's actually a skill that can be learned. I have a personal anecdote with this that I wanted to share. When I was about 7 years old, I kept having a reoccurring nightmare about Ronald McDonald. I don't know why him specifically, but I always had this same nightmare. So I looked up how to control my dreams and figure out a bunch of little tricks, such as checking the time frequently, telling myself throughout the day that I'm dreaming, and doing these so-called reality checks. If you do these often enough, you will do them by habit in your dream, and then you'll realize that something's off. There's other methods to this, such as wild dreaming, where you try and stay awake while having your eyes closed. Now, this experience specifically is really daunting and very, very weird. I've tried doing it myself, but it almost always led to sleep paralysis because I pussied out halfway through. The way you do it is by closing your eyes and focus on staying awake. What will happen is you'll trick your body into thinking that you're asleep and then your body does these awake checks where it makes you feel itchy so that you'll have to scratch your arm or it'll give you a headache in order to induce you to move around. The only way to get around these is just fighting through it and just keeping it as still as possible until they go away. Only problem is, if you move around during these steps, you start experiencing sleep paralysis because of how far along your body is into the REM cycle. It can be done, but it's very, very difficult, and I don't recommend trying it just because of how scary sleep paralysis actually is, if you guys have experienced it yourself. But basically, lucid dreaming is just where you are aware of the fact that you're dreaming. Now, some people also believe that doing certain things in your dreams can have positive effects on your actual life, which is why people try lucid dreaming in the first place. But honestly, there's a huge rabbit hole of lucid dreaming. You can probably go down yourself. That's just the basic idea of what this is. Enough said, moving on. MK Ultra. MK Ultra was a secret CIA program devoted to developing weapons, substances, and techniques for use in the Cold War. 
So basically what happened in this program was the government brought in people and then pumped them full of drugs. Much focus was put on specifically using psychotropic drugs which affect your mind. This was all done in the hopes that some people would manifest some kind of inconceivable mind power that could be weaponized. Some possible theories come from the idea that MKUltra never ended and actually is still going on to this day without the population knowing. Comment below with your thoughts on this attempt at creating a real super soldier army. Moving on. Hypnosis. I'm pretty sure most people know of the concept of hypnosis. Hypnosis is an induced mental state that allows people to recall memories thought to be lost. It is also known to be used as a form of therapy, pain management, and even a form of interrogation. Some believe it to be more powerful than it actually is, but all we know is that some form of hypnosis does actually exist and can be beneficial to some. There have even been reports of people remembering long forgotten memories by utilizing hypnosis to recall their deep thoughts. Not much else needs to be said, let's move on. Fluoride dangers. Fluoride is used in basically everything. In the US specifically, it's used in our water. The reason for this is to help with tooth decay, but some people believe that despite the benefit, fluoride is in fact a chemical, and as a chemical, it's supposed to be harmful to our bodies in ways that we can't personally see or experience. Some even argue that fluoride actually harms our teeth, which makes us go to the dentist. Others believe that we are being brainwashed by the government by putting it into our water supply. There's tons and tons of theories about what fluoride actually does to us but they always vary from theorist to theorist. The two I mentioned here are the biggest ones that I always see talked about with us being brainwashed or it being damaging to our teeth. Not much else is really known about this though. I don't know if it's just speculation or there's proof, but that is basically what the fundamental idea of fluoride dangers is. Moving on. Reality simulation. We've all heard it. Daddy Musk told us about this one. There was a popular theory that all that you experience in life could possibly be a computer simulation. We are advancing technology at a fast rate. I mean, just 12 years ago, this phone was the best possible phone that you could get your hands on. The theory comes from the fact that since we are advancing technology so fast, we will get to a point where virtual reality and computer simulations will be so lifelike that people within them won't be able to tell the difference between real life and a computer simulation. The evidence for this comes from AIs. If AIs become so advanced within their confines of their computer, it's theoretically possible that they themselves could begin creating their own machines and therefore would begin life within their little simulation. Much like what people believe is going on right now, people think that we came from an AI that was so advanced that it created its own simulation and everything that we're experiencing right now is actually just ones and zeros. Not much else needs to be said, let's move on. McFly Code So this one is actually super interesting, I did not know about this until making this video. The McFly Code is in reference to a theory that the Back to the Future series predicted the JFK assassination and 9-11. There are various details in the movies that are used as evidence in this theory. For example, the Twin Pines Mall being called the Twin Pines Mall instead of something like the Two Pines Mall or Dual Pines Mall means that they purposefully named this mall the Twin Pines Mall, which is supposed to be a direct reference to the Twin Towers. Also, when Marty arrives at this mall, the clock reads 116, which upside down is 9-11. Then later, there's an obvious reference to terrorism with the Libyans. These are just some examples that people have pointed out when watching the Back to the Future series. This is honestly one of the wildest conspiracy theories I've read in a long time and it's really freaking awesome to think about. Let me know what you guys think about this one in the comments. With that said, let's go on to the next item, dowsing. Dowsing is a pseudoscience in which you locate water using what people call a dowsing rod, which is just a Y-shaped rod. An example that you might know of is in the movie Coraline. She utilizes a Y-shaped stick in order to find the already visible well. Dowsing as it's known right now is just using the Y-shaped rod. People have also reported to have found their way to water and ravines by just utilizing a Y-shaped twig. If there's any truth to this is unknown, but there are reports of people actually being able to do this. With that said, let's go on to the next item. Admiral Bird. Admiral Bird was part of an expedition known as Operation High Jump. 
This expedition was the largest expedition of Antarctica to date. The theory from all of this stems from what happened to Admiral Byrd once he returned. Byrd was quarantined for a few days after returning and was told not to speak of his expedition. People speculate that he discovered a secret place in Antarctica that was not snowy but instead sunny, and that there was a giant civilization that he found with inside the Earth. We will touch on this a bit later in the iceberg, but that's the basic synopsis of this entry. Moving on. Weather Control Weather Control deals mostly with the HAARP project, or HARP for short. HARP is based in Alaska, and its basic function as we know it is to just monitor weather activity. However, people believe that HARP is actually used in order to control the weather. Weather control also ties into chemtrails and the HARP project, as some people believe that the HARP project has something to do with the chemtrails that we see. Not much is really known though, but that's the basic idea. Moving on. Freemasons. Freemasons refers to the group of people known as the Freemasons. The Freemasons are a secret fraternal society that is supposedly the largest in the world. It is proposed that this secret society has existed since at least the 18th century, but could date as far back as the Middle Ages. The Freemasons have had many powerful members throughout history, which is where the theory for this one comes from. People believe that this organization has major influence around the entire world, influencing major events behind closed doors without anyone knowing. Not much else needs to be said. Moving on. Pfaffenstein Theory I believe this entry has to deal with the urban legend surrounding the mountainous range known as Pfaffenstein. The urban legend talks about this rock formation which people believe came to be when a mother cursed her daughter by turning her into a stone, leaving behind this strange rock formation that we now see today. I assume there is more to this urban legend, but anytime I look up Pfaffenstein urban legend, almost nothing related to the idea comes up. I'm just going to assume that that's the basic idea of this urban legend. Moving on. 23 Enigma The 23 Enigma is the phenomenon that the number 23 is a significant number that can be seen all throughout history. There has even been a movie on it called The Number 23. There is tons and tons of evidence for this. Some examples are Julius Caesar being stabbed 23 times, us people having to use 23 chromosomes from each parent to make a baby, William Shakespeare being born on April 23rd and then dying on April 23rd. Some of the greatest NBA players of all time have the number 23 on their jerseys. The list goes on and on with how the number 23 has been seen basically everywhere in the world. Comment below on any instances of the number 23 manifesting itself in your daily life. Moving on. Agartha. Agartha actually ties into the earlier entry on this list, Admiral Byrd. Remember how I mentioned that Admiral Byrd found some secret place? Well, the place that he supposedly found is known as Agartha. There is a theory known as the Hollow Earth Theory which proposes that inside the Earth is a completely different civilization beneath our civilization. Other history on this, which was unbeknownst to me, apparently Hitler and the Nazis were looking for this Hollow Earth civilization during World War II, and since Admiral Byrd was sent around the same time, people believe that Byrd found Agartha and was told to never speak of it to anyone. That's all that needs to be said for this entry. Let's go on to the next one. Astral Projection Astral projection is similar to what you may know as an out-of-body experience. People claim that they are able to project their soul out of their body, seeing and moving around the real world while their actual body lies asleep. There have been tests done with seizures and hospital patients wherein doctors would yell or shout out certain odd phrases and then ask the patients if they remember those phrases being said. Other tests have been to put random objects in people's rooms while they are trying to astrally project to see if they are actually going out of their body by asking the patient which random objects were placed around the room. Some tests have even gone as far as putting legible signs on the top of a roof of a building claiming that they can astrally project their soul to the top of the building and then would be able to read off the sign, proving that they can astrally project. Not much else needs to be said. Moving on. Succubi Succubi are mythical creatures that are disguised as women, using their physical appearance to lure men into sex and killing them. 
A classic example that uses succubi in modern media would be Jennifer's body. Usually these creatures are depicted as monsters with wings and vampire teeth, but they don't actually feed on men by biting into them. Instead, they feed off of their lust, slowly sucking the life and energy from the man over time. Moving on. The Missing Cosmonauts The Missing Cosmonauts refers to the cosmonauts that lost their lives when they were sent to space by the Soviets during the famous space race in the 1960s. Before Yuri Gagarin was shot up into space successfully, people believed that the USSR sent a lot of other cosmonauts into space which resulted in the deaths of most of those people. And instead of telling the public of these failures, they swept it under the rug in order to save the reputation of their space program. This is one of the more believable theories I have read in a long time because it seems very plausible that there were definitely some issues when flying people to space, especially since this was during the infancy period of man's experience with space travel. So it's definitely possible that there were lots of failures that could have resulted in the death of more than just a few astronauts, with the government then trying to cover it up in order to save face. Not much else needs to be said, let's move on. Dyatlov Pass During 1959, nine experienced hikers and researchers went missing as they were trekking through the freezing Ural Mountains. It is stated that sometime during their expedition, they fled their tent and were met with untimely deaths. The weird thing though is that every single one of them was almost completely naked, they had eyes missing, tongues missing, and just overall, their bodies were in such bad shape that it heavily implied that there was some foul play involved. This became an even bigger mystery when researchers determined that the footprints that the hikers left showed that the hikers were not in a rush to leave when they left the tent. The way in which their footprints were left told us that when they left the tent, they did so in a calmly manner. But the way in which the bodies were handled suggested that some big, unstoppable force made them go out of their tent and possibly even killed them. That's why this mystery is just that, a mystery. There has been people that have attempted to explain the story behind these nine hikers. The best video I've seen on the subject is this video that Lemino put out on the story. I'll leave a link to it in the description because honestly, it's a great little documentary to watch in the entire situation. And I feel like he sums up the story, basically how it might have happened. Not much else needs to be said. Moving on. Declassified documents. Declassified documents is super vague. I believe that this is in reference to how recently in 2020, a ton of classified government documents have now become declassified, meaning that they are now available to the public. Most of these documents disprove the many conspiracy theories that were out there. I believe at some point there was even a 2500 page document concerning UFO identification. Now obviously with all of this out, it's just a matter of time before someone actually reads these documents and tells us because I, like many of you, am way too lazy to go through all the effort to read all of this. If you guys know any information on what these classified documents held, go ahead and comment below. Moving on. Toxoplasmosis Toxoplasmosis is a disease caused by a tiny parasite. It is said that the parasite can influence the minds of animals and possibly even humans. Some cases have come out discerning that it has made mice want to get eaten by cats so that the parasite could reproduce. As of right now, lots of humans are actually diagnosed with this disease but show no real symptoms. People have theorized that it might be possible for this parasite to alter your mind without you even knowing, and that it has already done this in our world's history and has influenced some of the world's most powerful influencers. The substance itself is mostly found in cat and mice feces. So next time you go to clean your litter box, make sure to be extra careful. Moving on. Tulpas. Tulpas in short are basically imaginary friends but taken to the extreme. How extreme? Well, the way a tulpa comes to exist is when it's created by a person. Let's pretend that I live at home alone and I'm very lonely. Instead of talking to myself and creating an imaginary friend, I create what's called a tulpa. How do you do this? Well, I start off by talking to this unknown person. Maybe I ask how this random person's day was that doesn't exist yet, and they responded with silence. I do this over and over again every single day, and I keep reassuring myself and telling myself that I believe that there is someone here, to the point that eventually this imaginary person will manifest itself in my head. 
talking to me like a real physical being with its own independent thoughts. Keep in mind, this person isn't physically real, meaning that they don't have a real meat body, but they simply occupy the same mind space as you. This so-called topa is now real to me and talks to me like anyone else. Since this idea came out, people have questioned their validity because there is no way to actually prove that they exist as they can only be heard in one person's head. One look into the r slash topa subreddit and I was honestly shocked. The way that people answer the questions here makes me question if this is an actual occurrence or just people excusing their schizophrenia. This comment in particular is what made me question it. Someone asked the question, how do I know if it's my tulpa really talking or just me parroting? The best response was someone that said, ask them to surprise you. If they can, they are independent. If they can't, then it's you parroting. The fact that someone said this part makes me question all of this. Many have linked this phenomenon to mental illness, but anyone in the tulpa community is very quick to refute these claims. Tulpas have also been known to help with astral projection, which was also said earlier on this list. With all of that said, let's go on to the next item. Operation Bluebeam Operation Bluebeam was an alleged secret government operation where conspiracy theorists believe that the government would fake a second coming of Jesus Christ in order to set up the Antichrist as the New World Order. This theory was born out of the belief that all of the world's governments are banding together to create a new world order, which most of us are pretty familiar with if you've been watching this far into the video. That's the basic idea, let's go on to the next one. Occult Knowledge Just so people know, the occult is a category of supernatural beliefs and practices that fall outside the scope of religion and science. So when you hear the word occult, think of spirituality, magic, witchcraft, Cthulhu, and Satan. These are all in the occult. So occult knowledge is self-explanatory. It's just having knowledge on all of these types of things. The reason that having knowledge on these types of ideologies is such a crazy thing that it has its own entry on this list is because there is a true belief that these occult occurrences are real. From people claiming to have met with Satan to performing witchcraft at home. The amount of single details and practices done within the occult is too much and can honestly have its own iceberg. That's why it has its own little spot here. Moving on. Magica. Okay, so I have no idea what this entry is supposed to be. The problem when researching this is that there are two famous things named the same way as Magica. There is a PS2 game and there is also the Elder Scrolls Magica. Now, I'm pretty sure that these two have nothing to do with this entry, as we can pretty much infer from the other entries on this list that Magicka probably has something to do with some weird voodoo magic type of stuff in the real world. If it's actually supposed to reference one of these two items, I think that's pretty stupid, honestly. Why have it on the list? But if anyone knows anything about this, please comment below and I'll include it on the part three to this iceberg. Moving on. Shelled slash firmament earth. The word firmament comes from biblical studies. The firmament is simply a vast solid dome created by God on the second day. You know how when you're looking outside you just see a blue sky everywhere you go? Well people believe that what you are seeing isn't just the atmosphere. Instead, you are seeing a blue dome around the entire earth. So the earth actually exists within a shell. Not much else to be said, moving on. Men in Black. This entry is referring to how after lots of strange events or disappearances, there are always men dressed in black suits, presumably government agents, that appear at the crime scene to take over. People claim that the men in black are in cahoots with big corporations in attempts to cover up stories and could possibly even be aliens in disguise working with the government. People believe that the movie Men in Black was created so that if you were to type into Google Men in Black, you would get no results for the real stories going on behind closed doors. Instead, you'd get the movie Men in Black. I actually found this one super interesting. If you want some more context as to how deep the rabbit hole goes, I think a good introduction video to the topic is the one that BuzzFeed Unsolved did. Moving on. Androids. Androids is most likely in reference to the belief that one day, machines will overthrow man through the use of advanced AI. 
While I do believe that one day this will happen, I don't think it's going to happen the way that people imagine it. I don't think the machine overthrow is going to be iRobot style with machines literally overpowering us humans. I think the overthrowing will be done in a similar fashion that we see it done in the movie WALL-E. Humans seem to already be creating an overdependency on machinery. One day, I imagine that we will be totally dependent on AI and robots to the point that we won't be able to do anything for ourselves, which would leave us super vulnerable to basically any natural disaster. Imagine if we have this over-reliance on all of these robots and technology, and then a natural disaster comes out and takes out all of our precious robots that take care of us. We would be left with basically nothing and be stuck in a Wally -E type of situation. Leave a comment below with your thoughts on the matter. Moving on. The Boy in the Box In 1957, a boy's body was found in a box off in the woods of Philadelphia. The unknown boy was naked inside of a cardboard box with his hair recently cropped with signs of malnourishment being present. It's clear that this was a murder of some sort, but no link to the boy has ever been discovered. No orphanages reported missing children, no families reported missing children, and no one ever reported to knowing who this child was. The dead boy's fingerprints were taken and people were optimistic about the situation, but to this day, no one knows who the boy belonged to or what his name was. The most prominent theory is that an orphanage tried covering up the death of this young boy by simply not reporting him missing. I personally don't buy this theory because the boy was found in a box, which tells us that there was some sort of struggle or murder that had to have occurred. Nonetheless, no one knows who was the boy in the box. Moving on. Divination. Divination is the practice of attempting to gain insight or visions of the future through supernatural means. There is a whole ritual and study involved in trying to learn this practice that dates way back to 300 BC with oracles and psychics. That's basically the entire premise. I don't really know where else to go with this, so I'm just going to move on to the next item. Multiverse. I believe that this is the general idea that there are multiple parallel universes that live in harmony inside of one giant universe. This idea ties into the butterfly effect, which is the idea that every decision you make creates a separate universe. Maybe today you woke up and decided to get pizza instead of Chinese food. That decision would have created two universes, one where you got pizza and one where you got Chinese food. You can take this line of logic and apply it to basically every single decision that you make and you'll see just how many universes could have been created in one single day. That's the basic idea behind the multiverse theory. Leave a comment below on your thoughts on this. Moving on. Giants. People have reported to have found giant bones and skulls while excavating the earth. Such evidence leads people to believe that there are in fact giants that walked and roamed the earth at one point. Other evidence to support this theory is the fact that the Old Testament references giants many, many times. In older depictions of rulers and royalty, they are always depicted as being giants. I attribute this to the fact that in the category of art in general, people tend to draw powerful people as being bigger because bigger represents more power. If giants did walk the earth at some point, there is little to no evidence of it today that we can see. There was actually one report of someone in the Midwest finding giant human bones in the 1800s, but those bones were either a lie or have since been lost. Not much else to be said, moving on. The Butterfly Effect I'm pretty sure that we've all heard this one. The butterfly effect is the idea where affecting even the tiniest thing at any given point in time could have drastic effects on your life and everyone around you. There are tons of examples from what would have happened to the world if Adolf Hitler wasn't born to people thinking of what would happen if you stopped 9-11. The name butterfly effect comes from the idea that squashing even something as small as a tiny butterfly could have catastrophic effects on nature's ecosystem and spread so many changes that it spirals out of control into various different timelines. Moving on. Ghost Girl. For this entry, I think it's more just talking about how in lots of ghost stories and supernatural tales, you always hear about someone being talked to by a ghost girl. Even sitcoms like Friends poke fun at this type of folklore. Who lives here made me feel a lot better about the whole thing. Joey, there was a little girl who lived here, but she died like 30 years ago. <laughs> Oh, 
was? <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Not much else needs to be said. Let's move on. Oil pit squid. In 1996, workers cleaning a sludge pit in Indiana came upon a strange squid-like creature swimming around in oil and toxic liquid. It is reported that one of these specimens was captured and put into a jar, but somehow it disappeared before further research was able to be conducted. People have theorized that this so-called oil pit squid could be an alien spore or some type of massive bacteria growth. Nonetheless, it's very unclear what this creature actually was. Moving on. Gang stalking. Gang stalking is a symptom of mental illness. Usually schizophrenic people exhibit this symptom. Gang stalking at its core is the belief that normal everyday people like myself are targeting you specifically for some sort of secret mission. You will be walking on the street and a bunch of people will just be looking at you randomly. Now in a schizophrenic person's mind, they believe all of the people that are looking at them are in on it. What it is, is unclear. If you wonder what this is like, if you've ever smoked weed and went out in public, you may have had a reaction where you are super paranoid of everyone around you, feeling as though everyone knows you are high and out to get you. That's the most relatable example I could think of that I've personally experienced, but leave a comment below if you have an experience with this or even know someone that's talked about this. Moving on. Denver Airport. If you take a trip to the Denver International Airport, you can see several instances of weird props artworks, and word choices. Such examples include this scene which seems to depict a post-apocalyptic ruin, this space that states New World Airport Commission. There is also huge underground tunnels that people believe are used in order to have secret Illuminati meetings. And the weirdest thing is that the airport has on display a Freemason logo which as you know from before is one of the biggest secret underground groups in the world. Also. You must drive by this eerie blue horse statue which is named Blucifer. Its eyes even glow a vibrant red. I mean you have to admit, at nighttime, this thing looks pretty demonic. The airport has even put out a video attempting to disprove these theories but the video seems to have only strengthened people's belief that the airport is in fact hiding something. Moving on. Bloop. The bloop is in reference to a famous sound that came from the Earth's Pacific Ocean. This event occurred in 1997 when researchers were listening for underwater volcanic activity along the Pacific Ocean. Hydrophones, which are just underwater microphones, were used in order to capture this very strange noise. I'm going to play the sound for you. Now it's not a scary sound or anything, it just sounds like someone's blowing an underwater bubble. Here is the sound for you guys. Leave a comment below on what you guys think this sound was actually supposed to be. Some people speculate that it's some scary creature underneath the earth. So leave a comment below on what your theory on the bloop is. Moving on. Mad Gasser of Mattoon. The Mad Gasser of Mattoon refers to over 20 gas attacks in Mattoon, Illinois in the year 1944. The first attack started when the gasser awoke a person in their house with a strange odor. The victim felt nauseated and weak with them soon vomiting all over their house. From this incident on, there would be 20 plus attacks in the city known as Mattoon in Illinois, and all 20 plus attacks had varying degrees of destruction. The mad gasser was never identified with the last attacked victim, describing the gasser as being a woman dressed up as a man. Because of the confusing details surrounding the gasser's appearance, and because it was 1944, it was very hard to identify the possible attacker. To this day, there have been theories about the incident with the city officials of Mattoon claiming that the attacks never happened, attributing the entire event to mass hysteria. However, it's pretty much agreed upon nowadays that these attacks did in fact occur, with the attacker never being identified. Leave a comment below on your own personal theory for this item. Moving on. Bielfeld Psyops the Bielefeld conspiracy is the satirical theory that Bielefeld, Germany isn't a real place. Despite people that live there trying to disprove all of the theories, it seems more like it's just a big meme to just say that Bielefeld isn't a real place. This all originated in the 90s when someone from Bielefeld went to a party and everyone realized that they knew nobody from that city. 
From that point on, the city would just get memed on with people claiming that Bielefeld isn't a real place. Not much else needs to be said, moving on. Skinwalkers A skinwalker is a type of shape-shifting creature originating from Native American folklore. It is said that a skinwalker is a human who has gained their dark powers through killing close family members. In doing so, they gain the ability to transform into animals, other humans, use sorcery and witchcraft, as well as bring sickness and death onto whomever they please. This subject is rather taboo amongst Native American tribes and is very seldom discussed. It is said that simply talking about them can bring them into your life. Not much else needs to be said. Moving on. The Zodiac. I am 100% certain that this is in reference to the Zodiac Killer and how no one has ever been able to determine his identity. From people thinking it's Ted Cruz to other people claiming that their dad was the Zodiac Killer, people to this day have no idea who the Zodiac Killer was. But it feels as though every year that goes by, we get some new story regarding the Zodiac Killer and his identity. The rabbit hole for this alone is pretty wild because there were times where the police was freaking close as hell to picking up on who the Zodiac Killer was. Leave a comment below on your favorite Zodiac Killer theory. This actually brings us to the end of today's video. If you guys enjoyed today's video, please consider subscribing to my Patreon as it would greatly help me. I wanted to quickly say thanks to everyone for being patient. I felt a bit burnt out earlier this month and took a week off of doing basically anything. Now that I'm back at home, I'm honestly just stoked to start posting more videos. Thank you to everyone that's joined the community so far. If you guys haven't already, go ahead and go join the public Discord. I made the Discord public. I know I said it was on Patreon, but it's actually public now. I'll leave a link to it below in the description. I really appreciate all the love and support I've been getting. It's honestly so freaking awesome to see the channel grow as much as it has. Let's just hope that we can grow the channel to 100k before this time next year. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss another upload. With all of that said, I will see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching.